Hey, good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, today's project, and it'll be a multi-part uh, video, is going to be the restoration of this Singer sewing machine on cabinet. This is a model, according to the serial number, this is a model 66 from January, February, March, April 19, 1927. Uh, it was, I was tremendously honored that a gentleman uh, who watches the channel uh, saw my work on the Singer Sewing Machines and asked me if I would restore this for his family. It's a treasured heirloom. I said I would, but he's quite a ways away. He's in the Gulf Coast of Florida. That didn't matter to him. He drove this up here all the way to North Georgia uh, for me to work on. So I'm tremendously honored and, uh, sir, thank you very much. So let's get started on this. It's a typical Singer. It's got the you know, same types of things that we've seen before couple of little breaks, a lot of veneer damage, and the first step is disassembly, so here we go. And if you've watched any of the other Singer sewing machine videos that we've done on the channel, you know the first thing I do is break these apart, and when they come apart we have a lot of pieces to keep track of, so I very carefully stack and bag and tag everything so I don't have any issues trying to put this back together. And the next step is to disassemble the sewing machine or get the sewing machine off the cabinet. What I do is obviously you just tip it up and if you look under here attached to these hinges, the sewing machine is attached to the hinges by sliding over uh, the hinge. The hinge has a shaft and it slides over it and there's a little set screw. I'll bring in and show you that screw and then I'll pull these off. And you're looking at the underside of the machine. This is the hinge right here. And there's that little screw right there. It's hiding under the uh, cabinet. So I'm going to get a, I'll get one of my old screwdrivers on there and get that out. And that set screw was loose, which is nice. You don't have to take it all the way out. Just back it off so it's not pinning. It's not pinning the shaft to this recess. To get the other one, we'll pull the machine right off of here. And with those screws removed or loosened, this machine should lift straight up off these. There we go. And you can see how these hinges have this little shaft, this little knurled shaft. In the bottom of the shaft is a little recess for the screw that locks the machine on there. So you back that set screw out of that little recess and just lift it right off. Take these machine hinges out of here. They're held in with a single screw. And they just pop right out, just like so. Let me get the other one, I'll bring you back. Okay, this is the hinge that holds the lid on. The most important thing to remember about this is there's two different size screws here. These are short, these are long. Don't mix them up during reassembly or it will end in tears, I promise you. And anytime you're dealing with old screws that may have goo in them, take some time with a pick or an awl or whatever you might have, try to dig them out makes it easier to get a better purchase on them with your screwdriver. Get a screwdriver that fits. Keep pressure on it and up they come. Let me show you the difference in the screw size here. And that will ruin your day. So be careful. Remember, the small ones go on the lid, the big ones go on the body. And with the, lid, with the lid screws removed from the hinge, the lid comes right off. We'll set that aside. Now we'll take the uh, six screws, or actually five, I got one out already. Five screws off of this, we'll put these uh, in the bag, and we'll continue to work forward. There we go. And I brought you around to the other side of the machine. Here's the flip up lid. And you can see it's held on with two hinges, one on each side. Six screws per hinge. Let's get those off next. And you can see how tiny those screws are. You don't want to lose those.
With the machine flipped upside down, you can see all this drip shellac all over the bottoms of the drawer frames, all over the bottoms of this, uh, this drawer. So we now know that this piece has been refinished at least once in its life. I know that the veneer had been completely removed from the top at one point. The top had been, you know, stripped. The pieces had been taken off, the veneer removed, otherwise pieces of veneer would remain underneath the pieces that we just uh, took off. So I, I would say that uh, somebody tore the veneer off and then refinished over the, the base of the machine, the substrate, which is, which is oak uh, plywood. So just an interesting piece of the, the history of the, of, the, of the machine. Doesn't mean anything to what we're doing, but it's good to know that uh, you know, we got a little broken piece of the drawer here, we're going, drawer frame we're going to have to take care of. But uh, it's good to know as we go through this, you can see the base, how rusted it is, and the chip paint. We're going to take all of that paint off with a wire brush and we'll repaint this whole base. We'll disassemble it right down to its component parts and take care of that. This is a later model machine with this, this part here that I used to call the garage, but I've learned now it's called the cradle. Uh, this is not fixed like most of them are. This one kind of moves with the machine as you open and close it. You'll see that as we disassemble it. The next step in the disassembly is the removal of these hooks. They are mounted to the underside of the drawer cases and they merely keep the drawer case from swinging out. They just hook behind the, uh, the cast iron base side. So they come out with four screws. Let me get those next. I And we're on the other side, working on the drawer cases on the other side, and this is the, uh, the loose joint I showed you. And then right next to it are these hooks, and then right over here are the, is these hooks. And right down the line we have another fractured joint and a split here. So we want to be real careful when we take these off. We don't put too much downward pressure on this and break anything else. This piece looks like it's just about ready to let go. So we'll be real careful taking these screws off and when this drawer case comes off, we'll get this repaired. It's the kind of stuff you got to look out for as you start to disassemble these. You don't want to cause any damage by being a little bit reckless or a little bit in a hurry. Very, very careful is the way to go. And with those hooks removed, it's time to take these drawer, uh, drawer frame cases out. They're held in with four screws. You can see the one here. I use a real long bladed screwdriver. You could use a stubby screwdriver or whatever. But I find the, the real long bladed screwdriver works real well for getting down there and getting these screws out. And there's one of four. Let me get the rest off and I'll pull this drawer case. And there it is. And we'll mark the screws, drawer case, I don't worry too much about getting these screws back in the exact same hole. This isn't uh, antique hand forged hardware, it's just manufactured, they'll go right in. So let me pull the other uh, drawer case off and I'll bring you right back. And we're at the back of the machine under the second drawer case and as this drawer case comes off, you can see how much secondary veneer we're missing here along the back and the cracks to the substrate they're going to have to be dealt with before we can patch in any more veneer and uh, return this underside to what it's supposed to look like. So there's a, there's a little bit of work right here. Okay, next we're going to continue the disassembly. And with the drawer cases removed, we have access to the screws right there at the end of my finger that hold on the cast iron base, the entire treadle assembly. So what I'd like to do next is to remove these screws and we'll lift, lift the cast iron base right off of the uh, which rain, remains of the cabinet. We'll set the cast iron base aside and we'll finish stripping this cabinet. So these screws are next. Three more. And the next step is to remove this L bracket. There's four of them, and they hold on this cradle assembly. So let me get to it.
Okay, get the rest of these off. And here are the L brackets removed, and here are the screws, and you may be able to tell that we're missing one. It's not unusual when you take something apart, find out a screw's either been taken out or lost or fallen out years ago. You know, this machine's, what, almost 100 years old now. So we'll, uh, we'll find a replacement screw for that. And as I said earlier, this uh, cradle assembly is a little different than what I've done uh, work with in the past with the older singers. And in this case, this piece lowers with the spring. It's attached to the cast iron assembly with this hook. I'm going to have to spread this hook a little bit to get it out. And then the assembly that it pivots on just comes apart like so. So as soon as we take those uh, L brackets out, we've got the ability to take this off and it's just a simple dowel on a hole that creates a wood hinge. So the next step for me is to spread that a little bit with a pair of pliers, get that chain off of there and we'll pull that out. <laughs> it doesn't often happen that I, uh, I predict something that's hard to be easy, but actually I was able to manipulate that chain and just slip it right off of this uh, this one. So now this should come right out with the rest of the assembly. So, let, so let's disconnect this and take this right off of here. Okay, to get this uh, front tilt drawer out, we have to take off these blocks here and they are held in with screws that go straight through here. And that comes off, the two screws come right through, and that releases the captured drawer. Next off is a spring assembly. This is what lowers the machine down and raises it up, or helps you raise it up. Four screws is all. It's coming off now. And the last thing we have to do on the cabinet disassembly is to get this piece off here. And this piece is just held on with screws from underneath. Two, three, four, five screws. Let me get these screws taken out and uh, we'll move on to the base. And there's that piece removed from the uh, work surface. It was held in with these six screws. And here's an interesting tale of the history of this machine. You can see where the veneer, the old walnut veneer had been pulled off probably because it failed. The person who did it didn't take that piece off that we just took off because it would involve disassembling the whole machine to get it. So they just cut around it. So what you see here is what's left of the old veneer, the original veneer on the machine. That's going to have to come off when we re-veneer the top. But I think we're going to spend some time trying to save that so we can use it to patch around if we have to. But yeah, that's what happened back when this machine was uh, worked on the last time. There's all our pieces. Let's move on to the base. Now I'm really not taking this apart in any particular order that is going to allow you to do a better or a worse job. I'm just simply trying to figure out a way that I can do it that you can see. Normally what I have done in the past is just taken the legs off, laid this on a table and then broken them apart. But I kind of want to give you an opportunity to see how everything fits together while it's still together so you can understand a little bit more about how and why it's assembled and how to put it back together. And I've got you looking at the back of the dress guard right here. This is the nut that holds the dress guard on. That's going to come off and we'll pop the dress guard off. For those of you that are interested, this is a 5 8 socket. And as soon as that loosened up, she dropped right down. And just like before, I'm just going to kind of throw these nuts and bolts on loose so I can keep track of them. Okay, down here at the bottom where the pitman arm attaches to the treadle plate, there's a ball and socket joint right there. We're going to take that apart. To do that, I'm going to tip it up on its side. And if you can see right there, this is the, uh, the nut that needs to come off. It's three quarters. And the nut on the other side. 
you can see here's the ball and this is the socket that which is what allows it to go back and forth we pop that right out I'm going to put that cap right back on so we don't lose it so now we've got the pitman arm and the flywheel assembly are isolated what do you say we take this treadle off next and this here is the mounting for the uh, treadle plate and it's a nut that allows an adjustment for the tension so just to make it clear we're going to take this nut off and this is the tapered bolt or screw that holds in the treadle plate and allows you to tension it by screwing it in farther or backing it out and you'd lock it down with that nut when you've got the uh, adjustment where you want and that's what we remove. You see the tapered the tapered end of it looks kinda like a bullet and that fits right in there same thing on the other side. Alright let me get these out and we'll continue and we've got the treadle plate off. Remember this is where that ball and socket joint from the pitman arm went we've got these two bolts that go in to adjust the tension and obviously you can remove these without taking the nuts off first but I did that so you could see how they work they go right in there so that's all there is to the treadle plate okay the next thing we're going to remove is the flywheel assembly that constitutes the flywheel and the pitman arm Now it's the same kind of a deal here. But you got to be real careful trying to get these out using a screwdriver because you can really strip them out. This this very well may be in here for nearly a hundred years, so be be careful. There we go. And that's very similar to the pieces we just removed. And here's your flywheel with the pitman arm attached. We'll take a look at this now. And here's your flywheel pitman arm assembly. You can see here inside there are ball bearings. This is the tapered end that goes right here. It's the word singer. It goes right there into your uh, into the hole of your cross piece, the, that X brace that I was talking about. This is the pitman arm, the end that we just took off with the ball and socket joint. This right here is a locking bolt that locks the flywheel onto the pitman arm assembly. If you need to take this flywheel off, you'll need a wheel puller or a gear puller on here to pull it off. Uh, I've done it before. There's really no need in, in a restoration to take it off. But if for whatever reason you need to take it off, you're going to need a gear puller to get it, to get it off that shaft. There's the flywheel assembly, and that sets aside. And all we really have left is, is this belt guide here and that's held on with this little screw right here. It just uh, unscrews or unbolts and that comes right off. I'll take care of that off camera and then we'll take the legs off. And here's that belt guide removed from the upper right hand corner of that cross brace assembly. And this is one of the four bolts that holds the leg assembly to that cross brace. And if you look at it, you think, well, I'm just going to put a screwdriver in here and back this off. Everything I've read has told you not to do that because of the good chance that you'll strip out this uh, screw head because these are sometimes in there pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is just put a pair of vice grips on it. I'm going to, I've got this little, yeah, it's got flowers on it. I'm sorry, but this little rag that I've got in the shop here to uh, protect the head of this from galling and let's see if we can get it off this way anytime you have bolts that have been in metal for a long time you can you can have problems with getting them off I don't know if that turned or that just slipped I think we're gonna have to do this without the pallet without them There we go. 
And of course, if you're having trouble with this, you can use heat, you can use penetrating oil or whatever. I've never had a problem getting these out with vice grips just the way I did it. And there you go. Three more to go. And that's it. And I wanted to talk just a second about these wheels. These are often missing in Singer restorations. The wheels are made of metal and they're held on with a quarter inch rivet. And by that I mean that once the, you know, this is cast with this portion in a dome shape, it goes in as a straight shaft and then it's peened over. So to take this off, if you have to, just take a file and gently file off this peened edge. Let me bring you in, I'll see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Right here, you see this little lip? If you file that off, you'll be able to, to pull the rivet right out of there and take this wheel off. If you have one missing, you can order wheels on eBay. Sometimes they come with a rivet, sometimes not. If you don't have a rivet, you can get a quarter inch uh, bolt and put it on with a bolt and nut if you don't have the ability to, to peen your rivets over. In a relatively short amount of time, we've completely disassembled this machine down to every one of its component parts so that we can begin our restoration on it. The next step are going to be repairs and I will bring you back for that in the next video. So from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards, thanks for watching, take good care and remember it's just wood, color and some shiny stuff but we haven't even got to that part yet. All we did today was take things apart. Take care, thanks very much, and I'll bring you back for part two, part three, and part four as we finish this restoration.